Hello and welcome to the Poker News Weekly News Report. I'm Andy the Anchor and I'm here to take you through what has been happening in the poker world this week. Our top stories this week. Daniel Devores taking down the $250,000 Super High Roller Bowl in the Bahamas. Online poker finally launching in the state of Pennsylvania. Igor and Liv departing ways from poker stars and the conclusion of the Poker Masters in which Sam Sovereign crushed the competition to earn his first purple jacket. This is the Poker News Weekly News Report with your host, Andy the Anchor. Before we get into this week's news, we at the Poker News Network would like to wish Sarah Herring a safe delivery of her first baby as she is now departing on maternity leave. In Sarah's absence, we have Oliver Biles coming in to take over as the head of video. That's you, mate. No, no, definitely not me. I'm Andy the Anchor. What are you on about? Anyway, Odds Checker have already put up odds for Sarah and Heath's baby to become either a heavyweight title holder in the UFC or a World Series of Poker main event champion in 2041. The line is close in both of these, with Odds Checker putting the new baby at 15 to 1 for the UFC title and just 11 to 1 for the main event. We look forward to seeing the progress of the newborn and wish both Heath and Sarah a safe and sound delivery. Right, on to this week's poker news. The sixth edition of the $250,000 Super High Roller Bowl concluded this week with Daniel Devores taking down the title and just over $4 million to go with it. Devores topped a field of 51 entries at the Baja Mar in the Bahamas, who were hosting the event for the first time as part of the Party Poker Caribbean Poker Party. Not sure who came up with that name, but that's a mouthful. This score is by far the biggest live cash of his career, and it vaults him into the top 40 of the all-time tournament money list. He came out on top of a stacked final table, which included high-stakes legend Eric Seidel, and two-time Super High Roller Bowl champion Justin Bonomo. A special mention has to go to Kathy Laney, who was the first female to cash in this annual high-stakes extravaganza. With her third place finish for almost $1.8 million, she earned more money than her combined total of live caches throughout her poker career. Wowzers. It has been more than two years since legislation cleared the way for regulated online poker to return to Pennsylvania, but finally, on the 6th of November, Poker Stars officially launched in the American state. Popular YouTube vlogger Trevor Savage, aka Raising the Nuts, drove straight over there to see what the games were like, and we were lucky enough to get a first-hand report from him about what it was like. Take it away, Trevor. Thanks, Andy. With PokerStars launching in Pennsylvania, I decided to take a trip over the bridge to see what the games were like, create an account, and see how they compared to the New Jersey games. I've played in the New Jersey uh, online games on PokerStars since they launched in 2013. So I got into Philadelphia around noon on a Tuesday afternoon, uh, created my account on PokerStars, which was very easy to do. Uh, the, the biggest challenge for me is always creating a screen name because I want to do something a little more creative and, and you know, put a lot of energy into figuring out what a good screen name is. Uh, but the actual account creation process is very simple and there were actually no geolocation issues or anything like that enabled in getting on. I went to a coffee shop and played from a coffee shop without a problem at all. That was a big issue in the early parts of New Jersey. It still is an issue for some people in New Jersey as well. So there are no con connection issues at all at that point. When I signed on, there were 670 players playing in Pennsylvania at the time on PokerStars, compared to, I believe there was about 125 playing on PokerStars New Jersey at the same time. That's obviously to be expected in a new market where there's a lot of new players getting into the action. Uh, but the action was really good. There were, I believe there were nine or 10 games uh, above 50 cent a dollar going at, at the time that I played in the afternoon on a Tuesday. So uh, not a bad start to the action at all. And it was fun to get into a new player pool and to be able to play against new players in a state that hasn't been able to have re regulated online poker yet. Uh, so I'm excited to see what the future holds for Pennsylvania online poker. And I think it should be uh, a blossoming market that should do really well. Back over to you, Andy. Thank you, Trevor. If you want to hear more about his experience of playing online in Pennsylvania, then check out his vlog, which my team will post in the description below. Right. Okay, yep. Yep, got you. Okay, apparently I don't have a team, it's just me. So, yeah, I'll post that down for you below. Last week, poker powerhouse couple Igor Kurganov and Liv Burry publicly announced that they were departing ways with poker stars. 
Buri, who had been with PokerStars since 2010, became a fixture at PokerStars events around the globe. She has racked up more than $3.8 million in cashes to date. Kurganov came on board back in 2017, and he himself has earned over $18 million as he sits in the top 30 of the all-time money list. Buri has mentioned that she'll still be firing the occasional tournament, but will also turn her focus to her YouTube channel, where she produces content based around science, rationality, and effective altruism. Kurganov did not mention his future plans, but given that he has been a regular in the 100K events, we imagine he will continue on the circuit. And finally, last week saw the 2019 Poker Masters come to an end, with Sam Sovereil absolutely steamrolling the overall standings to earn his first purple jacket. He took down the tour's final event, which was the $50,000 No Limit Holder main event, for $680,000. Can you believe that this was his seventh cash in a series that contains only 10 tournaments? A pretty incredible statistic, and a much-deserved champion. Sovereign cashed for almost $1.4 million in the series, which is more money than the combined total of the second and third place finishers in the race for that purple jacket. If you've made it this far, then congratulations, and I have a special treat for you. Many of you will know the name Andrew Nimi, and he has very kindly offered to impart some of his poker knowledge with you in a new feature called Poker Tip of the Week. Take it away, Andrew. Thanks, Andy. Guys, a quick word about tilt. So you might think as a professional poker player or as a serious recreational player, that you're not supposed to feel any pain as a result of the natural swings of poker. That would be great on some sort of alien planet where we're all some zen-like beings, or if we were coded as uh, a bot, a poker playing bot. But here on planet Earth, you're going to be human. You can't beat yourself up for feeling human emotions as you endure variance, or you are really gonna start piling on yourself for not feeling more like a professional. I don't think a realistic goal should be some sort of zen-like, state of consciousness. I think the actual goal should be to go ahead, feel angry, feel frustrated as you fold that 10-6 suited from under the gun in a full ring game. Be annoyed as you stick to profitable ranges. Back to you, Andy. Thanks for that tip on tilt, Andrew. Be sure to check out his vlog if you haven't already. And yes, I guess I'll be writing that in the description below as well. And that's all we have time for here on the Poker News Weekly Update. But be sure to join me, Andy the Anchor, next week for the latest in what's happening around the globe with that beautiful card game we call poker. Ta-ta for now. <laughs> A pretty incredible statistic. Go back. <clears throat> with Sam Sovereil absolutely steamrolling the overall standing. <laughs> With Sam Sovereil absolutely steamrolling the overall standings. Why can't I say standings? Standings.